Here's a great thing about digital cameras, whether it be your smartphone or a DSLR, uh, almost all of them will embed useful information into the photo, such as the time, the date, and maybe even the location. And that's cool if you want to make an album or share with people or search for that old photo from decades ago that, um, that you want to get at. Um, here's the bad news is that things sometimes go bad, whether your battery's died or you're in a different time zone or you can't get a GPS signal, the data's not there. How do you deal with it? Well, we're gonna tell you with some tips from some of our listeners coming later in the show. Um, but in the meantime, welcome to Mac Geek App episode 944 for Monday, September 5th, 2022. <laughs> Welcome to Mac Geek Gab, the show where you send in your tips, your questions, your cool stuff found. We share your tips. We share your questions. We try to answer your questions. Sometimes we ask questions of our own. Sometimes we share cool stuff found of our own with a goal being that each of us gets to learn, gets to learn at least five new things every single time we get together. Sponsors for this episode include Collide at K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash M-G-G, where you can get device security that fixes your challenging problems, messaging your users with Slack. It's very cool. And ZocDoc at ZocDoc dot com slash M-G-G. You can sign up for free, download their app, and start finding your doctor with appointments as available as early as tomorrow. We'll talk more in depth about both of those and a lot of other things shortly here for now. Here in it almost feels like fall, Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton, and here in Fairfield, Connecticut, this is John Fraud. And here in Lee, New Hampshire, where it does feel like fall. I'm sorry, it just does. Pilot Pete, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, man, thanks for. Uh, I'm glad we're all here. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is uh, this is a highlight of every of one of my weeks. I can't think of a time where doing the show was not a highlight. Maybe when we had like. Lots and lots of technical glitches in the in the recording process itself. <laughs> uh, yeah, this week's been nuts. I didn't. I, I, there was a there were there were two days earlier this week where I thought you were just going to punt on this, and the only episode for this week is going to be the Apple event episode, and and it's just going to be okay. Um, and and yet here we are, and here I am thankful are. for it. Yeah, I'm also thankful for Steve with his quick tip. He says. Uh, <clears throat> I've a trick I've discovered for all iPhone users. Have you ever taken a photo of your computer screen only to find that you've got a huge moray pattern over the image? That's where you get like those weird like lines because of the, 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 the way the screen displays things. You don't actually see them on the screen, but you see them on the picture. It says, I have discovered a way to minimize that pattern. Make sure your native iPhone camera app is set to take live photos. Then take a picture. Now go into the photos app and under the live photo dropdown, choose long exposure, no more moiré pattern. It makes it go away. Amazing. I, I, I had no idea about this, Steve, uh, and I tried it, and immediately it just worked. So freaking amazing. I love it. This is, this is what I love quick tips for. So mm. have you guys ever, ever I'm, I'm, I know you've stumbled into that problem because we've all had to take pictures of our, our screens at, at, uh, at times. So, yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah. that's, that's going to be useful. Uh-huh. I just got to remember I, that, that, that the trick to so many of these and it, you know, we, we, at the very least, we have all it, the, the, the three of us that do the show have heard every single one of them, right? Because we're, we're the ones sharing them with you. So we see them come in via email uh, and then we share them here. So at the very least, we've interacted with them twice, which is at least one more time than every listener, right? Except for the ones that send it in, but you guys already know the tricks, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so I know these things are possible, like in the back of my head, but there's, there's been so many times where it's like, oh, dude, I can't remember how to do it. Like, for example, uh, and this is a great quick tip, too. My daughter and I went and got uh, matching tattoos of traffic lights. If you want to know the story, come into our Discord channel sometime and I'll, I'll, I'll share. But uh, we went and did that yesterday. 
and I, the, the tattoo artist, it was, you know, let's say 30 something woman did a great job. Very nice. At the end, she took some pictures of our, 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 the backs of our calves together so that we could see the tattoos before they started going through the healing process and they don't look quite as good. And, uh, we asked, my daughter asked, can you airdrop those to me? And the woman's like, sure. And clearly she is used to training people how to airdrop and receive airdrops because she does this all the time. And she's like, yeah, I was just going to ask you to turn on your phone, wake up your phone so that I can airdrop these to you. And then she said, okay, I'm not seeing it. Please go into settings. And she walked her through going into airdrop settings in the settings app to change it from contacts only, like we talked about last week. To everyone, because the tattoo artist and my daughter were not mutual contacts of each other so that she could receive these airdrops. And of course, that worked. And as she's doing that, I'm saying, you know, there's I think there's an easier way in control center. And, and she sort of dismissed me because, you know, what, what 50 year old guy is going to know more about how to airdrop than some millennial. And I, I just happened to have my phone like sort of out where people could they could see my screen. And I'm like, yeah, I think so. And I, I, I'm like, you long press. She's like, no, nah, I tried that. It doesn't work. And I'm like, yeah, I think so. And I go in and I, I open Control Center. And I'm not going to skip over this because this is the quick tip. Uh, and I long press on the, the group of four items that has like cell data, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. It does not have AirDrop there. But if you long press on that group oh, of four. Dude, that's see, awesome. It expands into six, but that's not all, right? But wait, there's less. Wait, there's uh, more. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, then you lo once that opens up, it adds two more, of which airdrop is one. And that's why Pete had his oh dude moment. And, and then you uh, long press on airdrop, and the little menu comes up that lets you pick whether it's off, uh, contacts only, or everyone. And the woman in the tattoo shop, Sonia, our fantastic tattoo artist, was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I had no idea. I was like, oh, look at the 50-year-old guy coming in teaching. Yeah, how could the old this. guy possibly know more about how technology? How is it possible? What? It's almost what? like you do a show about this stuff or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are the odds? What are the odds? Yeah, exactly. Which, Pretty which slim, I, it turns which out. Which do you long press on? So the first thing you long press on in control center is the group of four items, John, that are like airplane mode. Yes. Uh, right. So you long press in the middle of that, not on any one of them. And then that oh, will bring up that. Nice. See, see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you're watching the video, Pete's got it on the screen, but you'll see it on your phone. Yeah. And then long press on airdrop and you get some granular options there, which is exactly somehow I managed to turn off my uh, everything, put myself in airplane mode. Don't do that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, I got another one for you that came up in a conversation in our Discord channel this week. And that is one. It's a it's a quick tip revisited. And that is if you are in the Mac App Store and go to updates, it sometimes lies to you. However, it is just a web browser. The Mac App Store app is a very customized and feature specific web browser, but it is a web browser. And so if you want a certain page to update, you do the same thing that you would do in a web browser, at least if you were going to do it via your keyboard, because there is no menu item to do this. But simply hit Command R. And if you go to the updates page in your web browser, in your, well, in your Mac App Store, go up, go to Mac App Store updates, hit Command R. Sometimes more updates will appear there. And the way I knew this was through Mac Updater because Mac Updater will tell me that there are updates. And then I launch Mac App Store and it's like, you know, why does Mac Updater say I have six when the Mac App Store says I have one? Command R adds those five. So it doesn't lie. It's just not up to date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think on iOS, um, you pull down and I think that does a reload. Yes. Oh, great tip. Right. Yeah, I've right. had that happen too, where it's like, are those all the updates? Yes. Maybe there are more. Yes. No, you're out. You're 100 percent right. Yeah, if you go to the updates tab on uh, in the App Store on iOS and pull down. Yep, that's right. Yeah, oh, I love these tips. Love it. Love it. Gene's got one more for us, I think, if I can find Gene here. And uh, yeah, this one, I I I haven't been able to make this work, but it, I that haven't either. Okay. I tried it. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm going to share Gene's tip, and then maybe we can talk about how we've done it and why it might work for Gene and not us. Gene says, 
when using the satellite view in Google Maps in a browser. Okay, so we're on. And, and, uh, I'll, I'll finish here. Satellite view in Google Maps in a browser. Hold the shift key and the left mouse button and drag the mouse to tilt and rotate the view. Google Maps serves up oblique aerial views as well as top-down satellite views. The oblique aerial views are available in many urban and suburban areas. My house is on the edge, so I can see my barbecue under my covered patio. Uh, he says the, the free application Google Earth Pro works a little differently than Google Maps and displays satellite pictures in slightly different ways, but tilt and rotate work the same way. So I think it's the area that we are trying to do this in, John. That's I think that's going to be the difference. Uh, Agreed. Yeah. So let's I mean, let's pull up Boston here in Google Maps and uh, Boston Mass. That's fine. And I will uh, I will go to I will zoom in a little bit and trying this out. I will turn on the satellite view and we'll zoom in a little more, a little more. Oh, yeah. OK. All right. And now if I hold down the shift key and I drag the left mouse button, well, if you were watching along on the video, I'm sorry to have disappointed you, but uh, it ain't there. It's not working for me. However, maybe it's a different browser. Like I I'm doing this in Safari while we're doing the show right now. Maybe there is a, you know, maybe it's a Chrome feature, which uh, I, try, not I just tried it in Chrome. But again, I have a trackpad, not a mouse. So that also makes it. I, yeah, exactly. But um, at, as as Gene points out, the uh, Google Earth Pro application would solve this for all of us. Yes, it. Hey, if you're like me, Battleship, it was a fun board game that we all played as kids. As adults, Calendar Battleship is the most frustrating game you play with your doctor trying to find when you're both free for an appointment like, you know, in three months. With our sponsor, ZocDoc, booking an appointment with a doctor that suits your needs, fits your schedule, is in your network, and in your neighborhood is easy. ZocDoc is a free app which shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. I've used ZocDoc. It's amazing. You can find every specialist under the sun. So whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix your back, get your mold checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. And ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting your delivery or whatever. You just search, you find, your book doctors, and you're good to go. And like I said before, you can find reviews on local doctors. Reading those verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments that's where the magic is. So you got to do this. Go to ZocDoc.com slash MGG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for your top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash MGG. ZocDoc.com slash MGG. And our thanks to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode. All right. Let's do some questions, shall we? Simon at... Uh, Says, uh, oh, Simon's new listener. He says, I, I recently found the, sh the show after the promo swap we did with Tech Meme Ride Home. <sighs> love it. Love, love, love it. Welcome to the family, uh, Simon. So Simon asks, what's your advice when buying a new Mac laptop? He says, I have speed and future proofing anxiety. Welcome to the club. We've got jackets. You're in good company here. He says, so I don't really know whether to double the base system RAM or double the base system uh, disk size, either of which effectively adds, you know, 400 bucks uh, to the base configuration. I've never seen reliable measurements of whether there's too little RAM or not. And he goes on to say normally he'd have like Safari messages, podcast, music, LastPass, FaceTime and Chrome running. Neither of the browsers would have more than five tabs loaded in a in a normal scenario. So general use is a, a fair way to categorize that. And there's the advice that I give, and then there's what I do for myself in this regard, uh, because I know better, but like you, I, I suffer from the same uh, concerns about speed and future-proofing. So everything we've seen says that for what you're doing, your use case, the minimum eight gigs of RAM is enough. And and that's a, it has a lot to do with the way the Apple Silicon system on a chip works where the SSD, the RAM and the CPU are all in the same, like at the same level. Maybe that's the, the simplest way to say it. 
And so if you do need to page out past eight gigs of RAM, you've got the SSD right there. That's a, that's kind of like RAM because it's so fast and it, it, it works. However, all that being said and knowing that I can't bring myself to do it. And so I buy with at least 16 gigs of RAM in my Apple Silicon based laptops. As for the size of the SSD, I would say that 256 gigs is definitely not enough. Uh, and it comes with some speed hits in in these because it it's a it's a single module instead of a dual module, so it can't take advantage of I don't know I'm, 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 I've told you more than I know, but it does come with a speed hit that's probably negligible uh, in the grand scheme of things, but technically there is one. So, but but I think you know, and and this is a hard one, but I think 512 again giving general advice 512 is a good minimum place to start. It it has enough to get apps and data that most people use with some buffer room. If you want to have, you know, some or all of your music library on there or some or all of your photos library on there, it, like that 512 starts to give breathing room to people. And uh, so th 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 those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts, John? Um, I would agree. Actually, I was perusing. Um, so here's the bad news. I, I think my machine is approaching end of life. Because uh, when we were at the show, um, I would only get like maybe two, three hours on a charge. And then I had to dash for a uh, an outlet. And this is your 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do have, you know, on both my machines, I have 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte SSD. Okay. But I was perusing the um so I gotta make a decision here. The thing is I have Apple Care in this machine and the battery is, at least according to one utility, uh hovering around eighty percent. And I think if it goes below that and I'm still on Apple Care, I think they'll give me a new battery. I don't is this normal though? Because I like is this new, I should ask. Because I I thought getting and Kiwi Graham actually just in the chat room now uh, said the same thing that two to three hours on Intel is good. Oh, okay. I, it, is that is that I mean, I know you bought that machine. If, if memory serves, you bought that machine right before pandemic lockdowns began. Right. Mm -hmm. So like traveling like this summer is the first time you've traveled with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had it for 18 months and and worked the battery for 18 months before you knew what a baseline was i think what you're seeing is normal that that's what people were getting before we on especially on macbook pros like like that one which is sort of built to be uh more uh, more about power than about battery life although you could use turbo boost switcher to switch off turbo boost and maybe eke out another 20 percent or something but yeah that was a big i i remember that being a big reason that people were eager to switch to the 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 m1s when they first came out was that yeah so i'll I'll, so, I'll have to make a decision here and also yeah. um you know apple does a trade-in and they're gonna give me like 400 bucks for this which i definitely paid there you go well, of course you paid more than that yeah but you also got you got you know almost uh what you got like 20 months of use out of it so far so mm -hmm. you know like yeah. yeah but i was looking in the refurb store and um, I did find one that I think is a candidate and it had, yeah, a lot of them had either 256 or 512 SSD, okay. which, which okay. to me is too small. I need more. I'm probably going to get 16 gigs of RAM and, uh, they had one that has two terabyte oh, yeah. SSD. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would offer, here's the thing, right? How long are you going to keep the machine? Some of these machines, I've got some laptops around here that are eight years old yeah, and they work fine. But I, you know, I went, okay, I'm going to use this for six or eight years, find an Intel machine that's going to do, you know, a Windows machine that's going to last that long. These machines will last. And if you, if you spend the money up front, they, you are future proofing them. And yeah. so that's, that's what I try to do. Uh, I've got 16 and a terabyte and I, you know, after, mm -hmm. after six or eight years, a terabyte's going to be. <laughs> uh tough to keep under it, it depends i you know depends uh, what you do and what you see but especially photos you know they're going to eat a lot of room. well that that's it yeah it if the laptop is and as i'm assuming it is for you pete if the laptop is your primary machine that follows you around the world yeah and then you're i am of the belief 
that we all should have at least one full copy of our iCloud photos library, right? You don't need to have one. You can leave the only full copy in iCloud, right? And then just pull down the photos that you're manipulating or the the ones you've created uh, are the ones that are local to your Mac at any given point in time. And that's fine. Uh, I can't live that way. I need to, I need to know that I have a, a local copy of my photos library somewhere. But for me, that can easily be one of my desktop Macs. I use three Macs routinely the one in the office is absolutely what i would call my primary one and then and then this one in the studio and my my laptop or you know sort of specific use laps i know i'm a i i'm i'm spoiled i lead a charmed life uh and i'm a nerd so it's just how it is so i don't need like 512 on a laptop is is plenty for me because i don't store my photos library my entire photos library on my laptop icloud photos has opened that door for me in a great way. I can travel anywhere. And as long as I've got an internet connection, I have access to all of that in the cloud. However, if for whatever reason, be it because it's your main machine or just because you have a need or a a want to have your photos library offline with you everywhere, then yes, you would need more than 512 for most people and most people's photos libraries. I agree. Yeah. And I will also add that Man, the battery life on these M1s is just amazing. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. what code they cracked, but it is amazing. Well, they cracked it with the iPhone. I mean, think about what the iPhone yes. does and and think about the how little battery there is in the iPhone. And it lasts, I mean, unless we unless we really beat on it, it can last all day. Um so yeah, like that's cool. that's where the code was cracked. And and wisely so. Like it needed to happen. Yeah, I think. I think your issue, John, was timing. You bought a, I mean, when that 16 inch MacBook Pro came out in 2020, that machine was like, that was a heck of a machine. The problem was, you know, what, six months later, the, 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 they announced the whole M1 Apple Silicon architecture was coming to Max. And so it, it kind of took the wind out of those particular sales. But, um, you know, like, it's fine. It's how it works. And it's, it, I forget which one it was. It was like one of the old, uh, it, was, it was a Windows computer, but the ad, you know, the guy gets the new 3000 and on the way home, the billboards for the 4000. <laughs> so it's exactly. Just, it's timing. It's the way it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So except next week, you know, it's coming. So wait till next week for the right. new iPhone. Don't be, yeah, don't buy an iPhone today. That's right. Yeah. 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 Unless you've got some weird way of working the market, uh, you know, like, <laughs> So, so you're the, the machine you're thinking of, John, is a, a MacBook Pro. Is that right? Mm-hmm. With si- sixteen and and two terabytes, is that that's the plan? Yeah. Which 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 MacBook Pro? Like which size screen? I, I guess is what uh, I should ask. I like sixteen inch. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. I I I. It, it's a general piece of advice. I encourage folks to go and touch these new machines before you place an order. I mean, if, even if you're going to place an order on a, a refurb, uh, go to an Apple store and, and experience the, the two machines, you know, the, the 14 and the 16 side by side, because with the way the bezels are on the, on the new MacBook pros, that, that new industrial design, the 14 certainly feels a lot bigger than the 14 used to is, is the best way I can say that. And you may still decide that the 16 is what you need, but uh, but you may also check out that 14. Or while you're there, you might look at the new M2 MacBook Air and say, okay, wait, 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 wait. That's the one I want. That's lightweight. That's for just bouncing around the house and traveling with. I can sacrifice, you know, a couple inches of screen real estate to have this lightweight, you know, super battery longevity based machine. And because it's a trade off, right? You're going to get less battery life, I think, out of that. I think. Yeah, well, I'll I'll consider it. The the only thing I don't like about this the sixteen inch is when I'm traveling, it doesn't really fit well on the tray table if there's right. like in flight entertainment. I think the fourteen would fit a lot better. Well your and your Michael iPad Ehrman. your iPad would fit even better. And mm-hmm. Michael Ehrman put in the comments, remember that the MacBook Pro sixteen is an I nine processor. So is that is that not an M one? No, that's an Intel. Intel I nine. 
My, jo- John's yeah, okay. John's 2020 or 2019, I guess, is technically what it is. Uh, MacBook uh, Pro is Intel for for certain. It was the last MacBook Pro released before they started talking about Apple Silicon. So. Right. Okay. So the new 16s have the M1s in them. They do, but I I think battery life on those is slightly less just because of the screen, from what I remember. But I could be very wrong about that. That that, that there is uh, okay. a okay. Yeah. That's that's all compared to. I mean, it's still going to be, you know, multiples of what you would get with an Intel machine. So it may not matter. Like relative to what specifically you're coming from, John, it may not matter. But just in general. And yeah, I honestly, I wouldn't use a laptop if unless you need to like do work on a plane. I would use my iPad on a plane to watch movies and entertainment because you can put that like a lot of the new planes. Well, a lot of the new planes have the uh, seat back uh, holders yes. specifically built right for phones and, and iPads. But even if they don't, if you've got a folio case on your iPad, you can often fold it the right way and drop it into the magazine holder on the seat back in front of you. And uh, and watch at eye level. So, which brings me to an impromptu cool stuff found. Amazing. So with the with the seat back uh, thing, there's a there's a product out there called Airfly. Okay. And you plug that in. Yeah, we got to find, find that Dave. Well, I'm, I'm pl- on it. So yeah. you plug that in, and it will create a Bluetooth connection to your AirPods, so that you can watch the seat back cordless. And yes. uh, you plug it in there, it charges it. And boy, is that sweet. The, the thing you don't want to do, it's about a 40 to $50 product. You don't want to donate that to the seat. Oh. <laughs> so, right. Um, but uh, yeah, so be sure to take those with you when you go. But I got those for Christmas gift about two years ago. I love my AirFly. You know, what's interesting is I have one of these. It's a, it's the 12 South AirFly Pro. Oh, maybe I don't. No, I don't have one of these. I had something else in the past. But I don't know where it is. I think I probably donated it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it makes me think that 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 you would want like a leash for it. Almost. And, yeah. But, you know, like record it again. <laughs> well, but, but the leash you could tie to your wrist or something. It could be like yeah. a, a relatively long leash or even a leash on a uh, on a, a, a re, you know, an, a retractable line or something. So that as you go to get up, it starts to extend and you're like, oh, I should bring that with me. So. Um, oh yeah all right yeah that's from 12 south so we'll, we'll put yeah. a link to that in the show notes for sure uh that's good i like it yeah yeah i will say traveling tra- there's two things that have made traveling much better at least in terms of passing the time one is having some way of watching my content on a screen that's that's a, of decent size so my ipad but the other is airpods pro and their spatial audio. I've used noise canceling headphones for years, you know, in, in variety of ways, you know, either passive noise canceling or by sealing things out or active noise canceling. And that's fine. The AirPods Pro do both. They have passive with the seal and they have active with the, you know, with the technology and the microphones. And that's great. However, it still gets very, the sound is from that is still coming from like inside your head is the best way to say it. And that can be really fatiguing because it's just this constant barrage of sound that's just being kind of shoved at you. Apple spatial audio, which is amazing when you have like Atmos sound or anything on an audio track. But even if you don't, the feature where you tell it to have a fixed position is on on an airplane is it's still and I've been using it for since it came out. It's still mind boggling to me because what happens is you start listening and the sound is coming from in front of you, just like you would expect. But if you put it in that fixed, you know, if you turn on spatial audio and you, you put that, put it in fixed position mode or whatever it's called, as soon as you turn your head, the sound is still coming from your iPad. And every time I'm, I have this concern, that's like, Oh crap, it's coming out of the speakers on my thing. Like I know into, like I look at all the settings and it's like, I'm certain it's not doing that. But the experience is that it's coming out of some speakers in front of, uh, you know, on the, on the seat back effectively. And that just being able to turn my head, which is a bad thing to do when you're trying to talk into a microphone, 
uh, especially for the listeners. So sorry about that. But if I turn my head while I'm listening, you know, having the audio just remain in one place. And then, of course, you if the, the track has it, you get the rear channels and all that other fun stuff. But just having the audio kind of fixed to the video location makes a huge difference in terms of the fatigue I feel from the sound. And I don't know why that is, um, but it, it, but it is. It is a thing. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty amazing. If you haven't tried that, if you've got AirPods Pro and you haven't tried that yet, like, like do it with this show. You can literally do it with this podcast, right? Just go in and, and, and do that, I think. Uh, depends turn on, on spatial audio. audio yeah. Turn on spatial audio and set it in a fixed position. Yeah. Uh, I think you can do it with just an audio podcast, but you could also just go to our YouTube channel at uh, MacGeekUp.com slash YouTube and watch the, this video there, and then you can definitely do it. Uh, and if you don't have AirPods Pro, well, now you know what to go buy alongside your new iPhone on Wednesday. So or there whenever they let us order them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Yeah. Anyway, I think I've said I've said enough. I've told you more than I know. Well, I, you know, I will say I've had uh, several different brands of, of air, ear, earbud, Bluetooth, and hands. You know, the, the Apple ones are not cheap, but they are hands down much better quality, much better sound. And then you add in the spatial audio. They are so much nicer than everything else. They just are. They just are. You know, I, they, it, it, yeah. They are. It, it, like, I have some headphones that have better clarity for audio. Like if I'm listening and mastering things and, and sure. that that's fine, but for general purpose, especially video consumption, music consumption. Yeah. AirPods Pro are cool too, especially if I'm listening to an Atmos playlist or whatever, like go listen to Rider, the doors, riders on the storm in Atmos. There's voices behind you in that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's weird. It's cool. But anyway, uh, but for watching video, it is it like it's the best sound experience I've ever had with headphones watching video. Yep. yep. And in fact, John, uh, we've been talking. We're whoa. Uh, well, you can tell people in a minute because I think we have an H uh, or a, a home theater uh, hangout coming up soon in our. Uh, well, well, we'll coordinate it in our Discord channel at MackieCub.com slash Discord. But uh one way to experience sur true surround audio is if you have an Apple TV and AirPods Pro is to just play the TV's audio to your AirPods Pro and then you get full surround and everything with a center channel and the sound is exactly where it's supposed to be it's not dependent on where we've each been able to place our speakers in our rooms like it's perfectly mapped out it's a pretty cool experience um so Anyway, but but yes, we have a, a home theater thing coming up, right, John? Um, last I checked. Yeah. Okay. What's what's but, the date on that, John? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm uh, oh, okay. I'm All right. Bring I, that up. I think it's. I think it's Sunday the eighteenth, right? Yeah, Sunday the eighteenth at four thirty p.m. All right. Uh, with Zoom, I guess we're going to use Zoom this time, so we don't <laughs> limit the number of people. Yeah, just. Can, see us yeah discord limits the number of people so yeah we'll but we'll meet in discord we'll put the link in discord we'll have the chat in discord so that the chat is preserved for everyone uh and, and obviously if chat happens in zoom we'll, we'll figure that yeah. out too but i'll put the link in zoom but it's 4 30 p.m uh, eastern time on uh on sunday 9 18 or 18 september yeah i'm, I'm still having issues of my setup is very picky in that I have to turn things on in a certain order for it to recognize the uh, the surround field. Cool. Well, we'll talk it through. We'll it's get there. Annoying. But yeah. I did order those cables. They're on. The, they're coming tomorrow. Amazing. Ah, a fun weekend project. So we record on Friday, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where do we go next here? And now I get to share a word from our sponsor, Collide with a K. Traditional endpoint security tools can make your workplace feel like a surveillance state. They can turn your users and the IT team into adversaries and ultimately drive your employees to work on unsecured personal devices. Very bad. It doesn't have to be this way. Collide is a device security solution built around honest 
security. Their philosophy is that employees aren't your biggest security risk. They're your biggest allies. And your relationship with them should be based on transparency and informed consent. Collide works by notifying your employees of security issues via Slack and giving them step-by-step instructions on how to resolve them themselves. So for IT and security teams, Collide provides the right level of visibility for Mac, Windows, and Linux devices, and it can answer questions about your fleet security that traditional MDMs cannot. This means you can meet your security goals without compromising your values. You're going to go to collide.com slash MGG to find out how. And if you follow that link, they'll hook you up with a goodie bag just for activating a free trial. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash M-G-G. And our thanks to Collide for sponsoring this episode. All right. So back in episode 942, we talked about photos and changing the time, date, and location. And John, this is what you teased up when we started the show today. So you want to take us to uh, Allison's comment about that? And then we've got a couple others, too, I think. Yes, we do. Um, so Allison writes in, heard the request for editing the EXIF data in batch mode for photos, and all the solutions were at the finder level. I wondered whether the person might have been asking how to batch change images that are inside your photos library. While you can change the date, time, location from within photos now, I haven't figured out a way to do multiple images at once from within photos. Uh, my solution is an app for iOS and iPad OS called Hash Photos. Um, Hash Photos accesses your real photos library, but lets you do more with it than Apple does. You can select multiple images, then using the share sheet icon in the bottom left, you can choose the set location and just date time, amongst some other fun things. With Apple Silicon, they came out with a Mac version, but oddly, when you select multiple images on the Mac version, the adjust date, time, and set location menus are gone, which is the main thing I use hash photos for. So you really do need to use an iPhone or better, um, or an iPad to make changes. Um, Steve's been scanning at our photo albums and being able to change the dates using hash photos, so they sort properly has been great. So, huh. cool. Yeah. Um, but even cooler. Yes. Um, is uh let's go to peter because peter gave us a heads up at something i didn't really realize you could do um i just listened to 942 and unless i'm missing something photos on the mac makes it easy to change date time of a photo i use this often when traveling outside my time zone and mix photos from a dslr and my iphone uh and want to sync up the dates I'll make a smart album with the name of my DSLR and the dates of the trip and then select all and change the time by the number of hours needed to sync. Huh. So that's very cool. Oh, that's a, yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finally, um, Darren let us know that, um, and, and I confirmed this. I was surprised at this. Um, greetings, chaps must be from across the pond um just listening to the latest episode regarding editing photo dates apple photos mac app has this built in works on batches too it's pretty good and sure enough um in photos if you go to the image menu um you can say adjust date and time dot 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 and here's the secret um that i assumed would work but and it did um you can highlight multiple photos. Oh, so you okay, can change. So, so you can change them in a batch. So you would you would um, you would highlight the photos first, then go to the image menu and choose adjust date and time. Is that yes? Okay, oh. and then it has date, time, and actually the a location field. Oh, oh, yes, so it does. If you didn't. Do you have to change the date and time? Like, could you leave the date and time alone and only change the location field? It looks um, like you can, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's okay. That's interesting. I like this. This is why I love doing this show. Yeah. And okay. I will. I will add the other thing, and I think a lot of people don't use them, but it, it's an easy way to make a smart album. Is the keywords in Photos is a feature that's available to you to put in for instance uh you know I, i'll put in aviation 
And if you take, when you create your keyword, go to your keyword manager. If you drag something from the bottom up to the top, it becomes a favorite and you can put keywords in with just one. So I'll, for instance, I'll highlight 14 photos and I'll pull up the keyword manager and you can drag the keyword manager off your screen. So it's not covering up your photos. And then I'll just type, uh, hit the letter A and it will put in the aviation tag on all of those photos at once. And then you can create a smart album using keywords. Oh, that's so brilliant. Can, yeah. So that's Pew. how I do it. Yeah. Oh, dude. No, that's, this is one of those things that like, this is a, this is the, right. epitome I've been doing it for tip. years. Don't right. you guys do this too? <laughs> no, no, we, I, I certainly don't. That yeah. like, that's one of those mind blowing kind of, I, I, as yeah. soon as you said it, it's like, Oh, I yeah. see, like, so it's under photos, window, <laughs> yeah. keyword manager, or command K, and then you can highlight a bunch of photos. And uh, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up for an example. I have uh, two, four, six, eight, about 10 keywords. And okay. generally speaking, they're people, you know, and I know that does face recognition and all that. Sure. But uh, it's people, it's aviation. Um, I have like the, uh, the tail number of my little airplane so that I can tag those and I can keep all those. Then I create a smart album using the keyword. Yeah, no, that the, I never thought about, I, I, I suppose I never knew because I never cared to know that you could create smart albums based on keywords. And so as soon as you said that, that's sort of what unlocked it for me is yeah. like, wow. Oh man. I love this stuff. Can you yeah. Do how much of this can you do on iOS? He asked. Almost none. Curiously, Almost none. okay. Yeah, okay. it has to be done on the Mac okay. OS, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it, it would be nice. Uh, hey, Apple, if you're listening, put keywords in the iOS app, please. Well, I'm I'm tempted to. <laughs> I, I will look while we're chatting here because I am running the latest iOS 16 beta, at least as of uh, Friday, September 2nd. Yeah. So you know, can I go to a picture of our new tattoos, for example, and add keywords here? It doesn't. It doesn't. It does like photo it. people places. Yeah. You know, it does not. Uh... Huh, categories, I, categories, airplanes, you know, yada, yada, yada. Edit. I wonder Group. if you get the option on iPad OS. I, I found that a lot of features will be on the iPad OS oh, version. Of but are not on the phone. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I don't have an iPad in front of me. I don't think any of us do. So uh, perhaps someone in uh, the chat room at MacGeekUp.com slash Discord will share before the end of the episode. But otherwise, we'll follow up. Uh, when as we can because that's how we do it and if you aren't listening live which if you're listening after the fact is because we live in a world where we have accepted this construct of linear time you can't be doing both you can have done both but you can't go back and listen live if you didn't at the time when we said we did it i know it's it's this mind-blowing thing not quite Unless you have invented the time machine and haven't told us. <laughs> or, or you've just adapted your mind to see time for what it really is, as yep. opposed to what we've agreed to see it as. Mostly, I think the, the whole thing of linear time is just a construct that, that uh, serves our, our feeble human minds. Where I think most of us anyway, perhaps all of us, are me, I am incapable of experiencing time as it really is. And so thankfully, we have this linear time construct. However, if... You want to contact us. You can transcend linear time by emailing us feedback at MacGeekGab.com. Did you say feedback at MacGeekGab.com? That's what I heard way back when he said that a few seconds ago. Feedback at MacGeekGab.com. But if I said it, you should have known I was going to say it because all of time already exists. If, I'll say it now. If you, I have a question. I have a geek challenge for us. Uh because as as you might be able to see, it's not uncommon for me to not be as productive as I would like to be. And so I, I have lots of tricks in my life that I've used to make sure that I stay on task and I, I get things done. One of my favorites, by the way, is not just having a to-do list, but having a to-did list. And that is making sure I've logged all the things that I do. Because at the end of the day, I want to – like my – my the story I want to tell at the end of the day is that I've done all the things on my to do list. And so by putting things on my to do list or on my calendar, 
I'm actually hacking the brain of future Dave, right? That that's like that's how I go about this. That way it doesn't take any discipline to do all the things that I need to do because it's like, oh, I want to tell the story that I got my to-do list done today. And so I like obviously therefore I I am I have the desire to check things off. It doesn't require any discipline. Uh with that in mind, I was listening to an episode of the New York Times the Daily a couple of weeks ago and they were talking about workplaces monitoring their uh their employees for productivity, right? And putting software on their computers, especially as more and more people are like, nah, dude, I don't want to go back into the office. They're like, fine. But the trade-off is that we get to monitor your computer so that we know when you're working. And there was one person who even said that they were hired to do a job and they're, they're paid by the hour for some type of work. I mean, it's, it's like high end accounting work or something for this firm or something. And they got their check and it was far less than the hours they had worked. And they realized that they, their employer was looking at 10 sec, 10 minute slices and randomly choosing a moment in those 10 minutes to take a picture uh, of what was happening at the person's workplace, you know, workspace, I should say. And also, were they using their keyboard or mouse and all of that? And if the answer was no, then you didn't get paid for that 10 minutes. And this was all very creepy and, uh, you know, but I mean, it was done with the person's knowledge. It wasn't like it, it was it was done with consent, but still was like, ooh, yeah, I don't know that I'd want to do that. I get the desire. I've managed remote employees for 23 years, so I, I totally get it. You know, there's times when I'm like, where the hell is that person? I, you know, like, why aren't they? Why haven't they answered me in 30 minutes? You know, why is their slack light not green? Like those sorts of things. I've had those moments. It, usually they're they're fairly fleeting. And if they aren't, then, I, you know, I have a conversation with the person. I always tell people who work for me, uh, I I can I have a tendency to be a terrible micromanager. If either one of us notices me micromanaging you, that is indicative of a trust problem that we both need to work to solve. Right. So and all of that said, uh, rewinding back from the tangent, I heard this. And thought, well, I don't want to monitor my employees. I don't want other people to monitor me. But what if I want to monitor my own productivity? Like that, because that's a thing. Like I, I if, if I could, I, I, I strive to be self-aware. And in doing so, the first thing that I learn every day is that I fail at this. I just hope to fail less than I did yesterday and and also in my mind, just to keep it, it competitive, I aim to fail less than anybody else I know, right? Like, that's the goal. I, I also fail at that, by the way. That's like, you know, how it goes. But part of the reason I fail is because I'm unaware of the the things that that I'm unaware of that detract from my productivity. And so if I had something that I implemented that monitored me and reported only to me, that would be really handy. So this was a super long way, a four-minute way of asking, hey, does anybody know of any productivity monitoring apps out there? If so, let us know. Feedback at MacGeekUp.com. <laughs> that was a lot. I had one. I had one, and I, it did. the name escapes me. Okay. Mm. It's fine. Uh, like, if I can uh, think of it, I'll, I'll let you know. But th yeah, there yeah, was yeah. one, yeah, it monitors everything you do on the computer. It, 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 it's attorneys use it for billing. Oh, for billing, yeah, there, yeah. There's that app by, by I want to say, Daniel, somebody or other called Timing uh, that I think is built for exactly this purpose. Uh, it's, called, it's at timingapp.com. So I'll put that in the show notes. In fact, I, they've been a sponsor in the past. I... I um, and and it really is built for that. It didn't work for me when I tr it didn't stick for me when I tried it back then. But maybe I have a greater intention now than I did then of of being you know focused and productive. So who knows? It wasn't maybe. timing, but it, it 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 keeps track of everything you do on your computer all day okay. long. Okay. You know, yeah. How much time you spend on any given yeah. task and yeah yeah. That's not something I think I want to see, how much time I waste. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, that's a big part of self-awareness. Yeah. The, right. the, the quest for self-awareness is th the first step in it is being willing to look in the mirror with all the lights on. Right. right? Like, you know, the psychological mirror is what I mean by this. I don't necessarily like to look at myself in the mirror. With Robert all the Burns on. said to get the geas to see ourselves as others see us. Exactly. Yeah. And we never can succeed at that, but we can right. attempt to succeed right. at that. Right. So, 
Um, but yeah, that's the hardest part is being honest with like, oh, there is that, you know. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's all the hard edges. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is it that that's all I have though, Pete? Anyway, that's right. a different show. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on any of this, John? You've you've been quiet for the last five minutes. Um, I'm just soaking it in. Um, mm. I use a whiteboard for stuff that I really have to get done. I have a little mini whiteboard, and I'll yeah. I'll make a list there. Yeah, That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that, like it, whatever system. Because it's always works. in front of me, so it reminds me how I'm failing every that. time I don't check something off the list. <laughs> That's the key. Yes, <laughs> I love. I'm definitely going to, for a little while, I will credit you for that, that phrase. Uh, it reminds me of what I'm failing at. Uh, and then I'm just going to steal it from you eventually, John. I, I don't say this with pride. I say it with self-awareness. Uh, I, I will, um, it will become mine. My kids hate this when I do the, do it uh, and steal their phrases, but uh, I will try to credit you for as long as I can, John. And then eventually I will stop. But I love I mean, that. Back in the day, I think they make an electronic version, but uh, have you ever used a Franklin planner? No, I, I know what it is. I, I, it, that uh, paper never worked for me for okay. this. It, it was when I found now up to date and contact uh, in 1992. I want to say I was working at Citibank. I went to Macworld Expo and the, the folks like the, the principals of that company, which then became the principals long, long, long years later for Busy Cal until they sold it uh, last year, year, two years ago. Uh, but uh, they th they built a thing that like I, I saw it and it was like, this works for my brain. And they had a calendar server. So we actually implemented it at Citibank uh, for a while, at least in my department, not not company wide. But um, but that was great. And then years later, John, I found out that our. Uh, our high school uh, ish uh, that time frame friend who I will refer to as the Griffin was one of the chief software architects of the original now up to date and contact. And, and now the Griffin is often mentioned on this show without being mentioned because he makes other things that we use and love. So there you go. Uh, Yeah. Let's. Uh... I should talk to my old IT buddy. So when I was working in a uh, defense environment, um, one of the guys in IT, um, they would ping your computer every now and then, and um, if they didn't think you were there, they would come to your desk. And if you were still logged in and not at your desk, you got a, a warning. Oh. And if you got three of those, bye bye. <laughs> Oh, just for us, from for security reasons, you shouldn't stay yes. logged in if you're not sitting at your desk. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And also, you know, lots of people had security clearances and there was secret and top secret and all that. I didn't have a clearance, but. um. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't uh, leave your machine logged in. Interesting. When you're not there. <laughs> interesting. Hey. If you like this podcast, we have a show for those of you that want to take your iPad workflows to the next level. The iPad Pros podcast is a show dedicated to helping you get the most out of your iPad. Tim Chatton hosts different guests on every episode to dive deep and discover how they work on their iPads. Guests include developers of iPad apps and the power users who really push the iPad to its limits. Past guests include Roger Shulman, who was nominated for an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay for his work on Shrek. Educator Mike Lang, who was featured by Apple for MLK Day 2021. And recently, a super interesting discussion with an owner of a used clothing store in Malaysia. You also hear all the familiar voices like Federico Vitici, Jason Snell, David Sparks, Chris Lawley, Matt Birchler. There's yearly deep dives on shortcuts with Matthew Casanelli. And for those who want to get into music composition and arranging, there's an extensive series on Sibelius and Dorico for iPad. Whatever the field, iPad Pros is here to help you get your work done on an iPad. Learn more at www.ipadpros.net. That's www.ipadpros.net or just search iPad in any podcast directory to find iPad Pros. Hey, so back in episode 941, uh, John, we I, I kind of put out the call for advice on Wi-Fi connected 
weather stations because that, that that's I mean that's something I'm interested in. It's also something several listeners had start, started like there'd been a conversation about it. And as you might imagine, lots of people emailed feedback at macgeekab.com with their thoughts. You want to start us off on this one from uh, from Rich, John? Sure. So um, uh, Rich says, I was listening to the home theater episode. And you asked about weather stations. I use the Tempest station from Weatherflow. Uh, I will link to it. Love it. They have a great app for the phone. I use iOS and their integration works really well. They're working on the Siri integration right now. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but I was able to get it to work easily by using HomeBridge tied into HomeKit. I just asked the S lady now what the temperature is in the backyard, and it works. I also have a Pi weather console that I built. I upload the info to multiple weather sites, and I even have a listener that grabs the data and builds a web page with info. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you report in as well. Okay, that's that's neat. You're giving yeah, that's that's one of that's one of the things I I liked. I had that NetAtmo weather station for a little while, and it it worked. It was it was somewhat. I, I used it to report into uh, Weather Underground, and the Weather Underground community kind of hated me and every other NetAtmo user because they were like. That's the least accurate thing uh, we could ever imagine using, and you're polluting the data. And it was like, yeah, but it's cool. I want to participate, you know. Uh, and then that weather station died anyway, so it was like, okay, maybe I should get something better, you know. So um, yeah, all right, that that's uh, I like it. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, accurate. <clears throat> it's I don't tough, know. Right? I have multiple sensors that are off by just a bit, or it's like, which one do I trust? Is the right answer <laughs> yeah yeah use a uh use a uh infrared thermometer to figure it out i don't know i mean that's, that's oh I mean, okay yeah yeah i, I got one you, of those i got I one of those you would point that thermal at. cameras oh right. no i mean like an infrared thermometer gun those yeah i know yeah, yeah I real see. real time those are uh, that that is one of the best like twenty dollar well now they're probably thirty dollars uh Tools for the house that I've ever bought is one of those infrared thermometers. It's great for cooking things. My wife started, I mean, the, the reason I say that is my wife just started uh, experimenting with making kombucha and you have to like let it get down to 92 degrees before you put the SCOBY in and close. I don't know. There's more, I, I've told you far more than I know, but that thing is great for that. I, we use it all the time. I use it when we're boiling lobster. Uh, to make to see how close I am to the boiling point before I before I drop the lobsters because I get impatient, you know, and it's nice to see it's nice to see the numbers changing even though the water's not rolling yet. So, um, but I, I mean, we use it for all kinds of things. I use it to to check uh, the delta on our our air conditioner between the line in and the line out, and I now know what that delta should be. And when that delta gets gets lower. Then I know it's time to get a, a service call done so I can get a recharge and like yeah it's a anyway yeah great thing uh yeah and, and, and anything more on that one Chris well I'll actually I'll add more Chris shared that he also uses the the Tempest weather station I'm trying to think if he has any anything specific to say about it I don't think so uh, Steve also had thoughts about the uh oh yeah he had a different different one to talk about I don't, I don't know why my sound is being weird there's something what on my computer is running so fast in the back you actually sound good to me earlier in the show i was having a lot of difficulty but no i'm i'm like getting uh like little clips in my audio and it it says that it's happening from from Microsoft Edge, which I'm not even like running as a thing. So I've, I've fixed that. My apologies if you folks are hearing it. It might only be me, uh, which I hope it is. Anyway, uh, listener Steve suggests the ambient weather station uh, from ambientweather.com. And uh, he said, I had an Oregon scientific weather station from 2014 to 2020, which I liked, but it was hard to maintain as it got older and has little support. Currently, he has this ambient weather station. He has the WS2902B. It was very easy to set up. The issue I have with it is all the data goes to the cloud, so I don't have the ability to review the history. So I use 
a an app called Weather Display at weather-display.com, which captures all the data to my computer. Uh, I don't use it with HomeKit because I'm still learning about it. Okay. All right. That's another one. That's great. Fun stuff. I like it. I like it. And there's, there's one more on this subject, right, from listener Ted, John. Is that right? Uh, yes. Um, so Ted, uh, I think it was a Mackie uh, 941, who uses weather and Ben's software. I use it for one of my cameras to upload pictures to the weather pages. And uh, it's at Ben's software. Uh, right. My weather station uh, had DSL for years. Now I just got fiber, so I should fix my weather reporting. Yeah. Huh. All right. I like that. Yeah, we've talked about Ben's software as like home security software in the past. And uh, I like the idea of using it to upload those pictures because it, when you go and see pictures on, you know, the various weather sites, a lot of them are just uploaded from, uh, you know, people like us. That's that's how they yeah. crowdsource it. Yeah. Huh. You'd think as a pilot, I'd be more of a weather geek, and I kind of am, but I haven't had a station in years. Yeah, I, I, I so. am surprised that none of us are, like, geekier about yeah. weather and logging and, you know, tracking it to our, like, using our synologies as the database for it, whatever. You know, like, it, 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 it kind of shocked me when I brought it up, you know, a couple episodes ago that none of us are, John, you're the deepest, I, I think with the, I mean, it's not a Wi-Fi weather station, but you've got, you know, you've got, you've got more than the rest of us, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. It does uh, temperature, humidity and atmospheric pressure. Yeah. Which it then uses to predict the weather. And it's uh, pretty good at that. I think basically if the, if the pressure is going down, it's going to, there's going to be a storm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can see it on the weather maps. Yeah, yeah. I Speaking of, I've long been and still am a fan of using uh, Weather Underground's app. The, 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 it shows up as Wonderground. And then the companion app called Storm Radar that also, uh, those two are, as far as I'm concerned, the cream of the crop uh, for weather apps on the iPhone. And I will put these in the show notes for all of us to enjoy. However, the deeper, the, the further deepening integration of Dark Sky into Apple's weather app in iOS 16 really creates a compelling argument to use that. It's not quite what I want, I, 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 but it's, it's really close. And, and when I say it's not quite what I want, it's just that Weather Underground, living here in New England, I like to be able to see at a glance the number of inches of snow and rain as well that I'm going to get on any given day. And I like that in the daily forecast view. And I get that with uh, with weather underground. It it just it shows me right there on the view, you know, how many uh, how many inches of rain we're, we're expecting. Apple's app. I've got to dig a little bit and I, I get I get the percentage of rain coming I don't see the number of inches of rain on Apple's app. However, I don't know what it's going to show me when it snows. And I hope to wait at least a few, maybe a month or two before I learn the answer to that with iOS 16. So, yeah. Although I guess I could set my locale to somewhere that it's going to snow soon and, and answer that question for myself. Yeah. But, so, so two quick, so do an yeah, iOS yeah, yeah. apps then. What, uh, for you aviation geeks out there, uh, there's windy. I use that with my, uh, with my small airplane for, okay. you know, winds and, and temperatures and pressures, that sort of thing. And then AeroWeather Pro, I do subscribe to that. That's a nice one for getting, uh, it, it will not only do weather, but it will integrate NOTAMs and you can even pull up uh, ground airport maps, um, that sort of thing with AeroWeather Pro. But it gets you all the NOTAMs, notices to airmen, <laughs> air missions now, to be politically correct. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. uh, 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 so yeah, Windy, W I N D Y, and then Arrow Weather Pro are both uh, excellent weather apps for the pilots in the audience. W I N D Y, you said yes. correct, and yes. and then when you say, are you saying Arrow Weather Pro or A E R O? Just... A -E -R -O. Okay, yeah. That's well, what let I me thought. just double check. You know, I, I, I yeah. just it's always... I know, I know. Yeah, Arrow okay. Weather. It, yeah. It, yeah, A E R O Weather. Yeah. I got it. Pro is the subscription. Yep, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, okay, cool. 
Fun, and that's fun. nice because it will. Here's the thing: is it will translate. Uh, if pilots know that there's a lot of uh, really geeky abbreviations, and it will translate your notums to plain English for you. So, oh, so, yeah. oh, I like that because even you know after 40 years of flying airplanes, they still hit me with abbreviations, and I just scratch my head and go, I have no idea. <laughs> what no, okay, okay. I was going to ask, like, do you need? I I would need that, but w- do you need it? And the answer it's, is it's sometimes. nice. It's yeah. nice to have. Yeah, sure. I mean, some you can sure. read it and just go, oh, okay, I get that. But every now and then, you're just kind of going. What, what, what is that one? You know? Yeah. It's. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And. Uh, Develop uh, those abbreviations were all developed when teletype was the only means of to course. transmit those things. And it, it needed oh. a few couple letters. And now, you know, it sh- they should do away with it, in my humble opinion, and just go to plain <laughs> English on all of it. Right. Because, you know, like you'll find the, it, the ones that it still screws up on the translations that uh, for the San Antonio airport, it's SAT. So everything happens on Saturday at the San Antonio airport in the translation. <laughs> oh. But other than that, you know, we'll find oh, a man. few of those translations to oh, plain man. English don't translate well. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Only on Saturday. These notums only apply on Saturday in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. That's probably not correct. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, one, maybe two last things. One is that Xfinity Mobile now they added. So Xfinity Mobile is the uh, cell phone service that you can get if you have an Xfinity uh, cable plan at home, either Internet or or TV or both. But you need to be an existing Xfinity customer to to get Xfinity Mobile. Xfinity Mobile is they don't have their own towers. They use Verizon's towers. Right. So they're on MVNO on Verizon. But. If you fit the criteria required that you have an Xfinity plan, they added their pricing has been mildly expensive for people who have moderate use for a while. It's been great for people who have minimal use. But as soon as you start getting up, it started getting a little pricey. They now have a thirty dollar a month unlimited plan, which rivals and might even beat Mint Mobile's unlimited plan. So. Um, so I wanted to share that because yeah, 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 yeah. Mint, Mint is thirty for unlimited. Because okay, so it's the same price. Paid. I was okay. doing yeah, I was doing the fifteen gigs. Yeah, and then I and when I exceeded it, I'm like ah, uh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. What I what I my plan is because I have this. Actually, I think I'm on the ten gig a month plan with Mint, which most of the time is enough, including when I travel. However, my plan and th- or I should say therefore. My plan is if I, oh, I if I exceed my 10 gigs and things like slow way down, I can just go for, you know, 10 bucks and buy data on a data only eSIM to use in the United States while my plan runs out, right. uh, you know, or my plan turns over to the next pl- month on Mint. And, and so that's that's my I haven't even had to enact that plan, but that's my plan, yeah. because that way, because it, if it, if it were to happen to me. And nothing fundamental in my life changed that made me use more data. You know, if it was just an overage, like a one month overage or something, uh, it, it, that's all it would be. So it wouldn't be worth it to me to pay more per year, uh, you know, for an unlimited plan. I just, yeah. just this is my it. second month. I've just looked. I'm, I'm, I've used 14.82 with 13 days left. Yeah. That's really unusual for me. So I don't, I must have used it in Florida for when yeah. we were down there last week. Yeah. Without realizing I wasn't on Wi Fi. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lastly, uh, unless John, you have anything else in, uh, 942, we were talking about different browsers to, uh, and different ways of securing your browsing experience. Private browsing came up, all of that stuff. One thing that I'm actually surprised I didn't bring it up, surprised none of us did, but it did show up in the, the live chat at macgeekup.com slash discord was using the brave browser for privacy reasons that, and the brave browser is, uh, it's fantastic for that because it's built exactly for that. You, uh, it, it's, it's like it's pri- it's a privacy first browser, even more so than Safari. It yeah. really, really makes that easy. So we will put a link to that in the show notes. But it's just brave dot com. Yeah, I use Brave all the time. I forgot yeah. about that. I, I, I love know brave. that's that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm. But thank you uh, for whomever it was that put it in the in the chat. So. I think that's what we got for today, guys. Do you have anything else, John? Oh, 
did you get Oops, super sorry. quiet? Okay. <laughs> no, I was muting because ah, there's gotcha. a, there's some catastrophe nearby. Sure. <laughs> So all the sirens are going on. I heard that was weird. You were on mute, but I heard the faintest of ums when you yeah. leaned forward. It, it's not a mute. It's probably a the forty dB reduction. Yeah. And the reason you would do that, it's I think he has a, a hardware mute button. But the reason you would do a, like a, a reduction as opposed to a, a true mute is because a true mute is going to cause a click, um, uh, as opposed to turning the volume down and turning it back up. Oh, so. that's what this does. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, based on the evidence we just as assembled here, it, yeah, it's it's a it's a reduction, yeah. not a mute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I've been on mute a lot of this show because I had a dog wandering all over the place and the toenails clicking on the wood floor. Yeah. She yeah. won't stop. <laughs> yeah. If, if if you use software mute, just like by clicking the mute button in uh, Streamyard, John, then that would that's a true mute, right? Because it's a software mute, so there's no. Uh, no need for a click. But anyway, I, I, my question still stands. Anything else? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know where I found this, but uh, sure. it's kind of a neat little tool if you do Twitter. Okay. Chirpty. C-H-I-R-P-T-Y dot com. You put in your username and it generates a graphic of your circle. If you want to know who your circle is. Huh. Do I want to know what my circle is? I don't know. That's interesting. How does it define that? Like the people chirp T with with a C O oh, C H I R P T Y, which I'm right. sure is what you said. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I think it it just looks at your history and sees yeah. who you've uh, who you've you Oh wow. Most. Huh. That's cool. Cool. Fun stuff. This is what I love about this show. Learning things every day. Thanks you get a nice little us. collage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Thanks for sending in all your questions and tips and cool stuff found. Thanks for checking out all of our sponsors. Thanks for to all of you premium sub supporters and subscribers. We have more coming on that, by the way. There's there's plans afoot. Uh, but we'll have that to share. But thank you for those of you who go to macgeekup.com slash premium and, and choose to support us directly. It's not mandatory. It is very much appreciated. Uh, so thank you for that. Thanks to Cashfly for providing all the bandwidth to get the show from us to you. And um, make sure you go into Apple Podcasts and subscribe to this show. That, that helps us in a, in, in a lot of different ways. So if you're not already subscribed there, please do that. John got us into this mess. Do you have anything to share to get us out? Just what it says on my shirt, lads. Don't get caught. Made up. I forgot. I didn't have that button queued up. And with the audio glitches I'm having here, I was like, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could have done I'll, it. I'll, I'll give it to everybody. I know that's true. <laughs> there it is. We'll give it to everybody in the chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh.